said, seek first the kingdom of God, but people have said that so much that they have sterilized it. They've sterilized it. They've taken the potency away, the reproducibility of the word of God. And reality of it is, in translating those Greek words anyways and translating them into the common man's language, I'll say the kingdom of God and his righteousness must be more important to you than anything else. And I've done no violence to the text. The other day I was just talking to, yes, uh, I guess it was, it was Friday morning. I was, I was talking to the Lord, just asking the Lord about the things, the state of the church, where people are at in the United States of America and their walk with the Lord. And, you know, it's a wonderful thing that the Spirit of the Lord raises us up to speak on His behalf. You know, He has put His words in our mouth. Jeremiah, the prophet, Isaiah, the prophet, Ezekiel, the prophet could say clearly he had put his words. He put his words in my mouth because God said, I put my words in your mouth. But now the Lord has done a thing for us that goes beyond that which could could be compared to past generations. He's given us his entire complete work, his entire complete words summarized in Jesus Christ, detailed and outlined in what we call the Bible And he wants his word to be in our mouth, not to part out of our mouth, but to be in our mouth and the seed of our mouth and the mouth of our seed. Rather, he put his word in our mouth when he gave to us the Holy Ghost, when he gave to us this new life in him. The Lord says to me, the lack of engaging God is especially noteworthy in praise and worship and prayer because it demonstrates the huge disconnect that exists between the individual and their God. I said, but Father, they've had wrong models. Father, they've not known what it, they've never seen in the heaven. They've never seen how excited the angels are about you who have never been redeemed. They've never, they've not seen those, oh God, who've been touched by your fire. They've only had a model of lukewarmness, which you have no fellowship with. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that in your loving kindness and your tender mercies, that your model, that, that, oh God, which is true, that which is of the Holy Ghost, would suddenly be witness like never before in the midst of your church I want you to hear this is what father has to say to you the Holy Spirit he's come to teach us to be our teacher and our leader he will show us everything that belongs to the ways of God if we're willing to participate unfortunately too many people stand around waiting for something to happen instead of taking hold of everything that has already taken place. Oh, just see Jesus. Just understand that God, I don't know what religion you have. I don't know if you have the Buddhist religion or the Christian religion, but what Christ Jesus gave to us, what God gave to us through His only begotten Son was rivers of expression of His divine grace and glory. The Christian religion can't have that. It can just have idle concepts that produce no power of truth or expression of heaven. Today, if ever before, if there's never been a day like today that God will raise up preachers to call those out of the Christian religion back to Jesus. Just like Israel in the days of old, they raised up prophets after Baal. They spoke in the name of the Lord, but they were Balak prophets. And they taught God's people how to be indifferent towards Him and towards His ways. Today, the church has done the same thing. Christian religion has done the same thing. I I will not use the word church in such a place or such a context. Fathers raising up people call those who have been imprisoned in idolatry just as Israel was well they said that they believe God they said that they serve God they said that they worship God well listen to what the prophet Isaiah said concerning them uh, you can never tell them that they weren't right but listen to what the prophet Jeremiah had to say they were certain that their worship was that which pleased God but look what Jesus said when he entered into the temple with a whip 
Oh, they had the outward show of all the good works and all the pre, you know, the good intents, but it was all a false pretense. Papa's looking for truth in the inward parts, and when God the Holy Ghost res- when God the Holy Spirit resides in you and me, we'll begin to shout the praise and the thanksgiving of the redeemed. Those who've been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ, those who've been made alive from the dead, those whose eyes are now open to see all that God has done for those who will believe. Hallelujah. We want to encourage you. Engage God. Engage God. Engage Him. Now, I know that if you're not born of the Spirit, you're dead. So you cannot engage God. You're dead while you live. But he that hath the Son who possesses Christ Jesus, who has invited and received Christ Jesus into the heart of their life, uh, well, they have the life of God. They're alive with the life of God. Alive with the life of God. It's a light that shines in a dark world. It's a city set upon a hill that cannot be hid. It's salt to a dying world. It's preservation of that which should be wiped out. Hallelujah. That's why when we, that's why when we, it's why when me and my daughters begin to sing, let your fire fall. We, we see something so much bigger than I think that a lot of folks do. We see a bunch of stuff that needs to get burned up. We see a bunch of lukewarmness that needs to be burned up. We see a bunch of uh, nonsense, a bunch of merchandising, a bunch of entertainment, a place to be successful in quote unquote ministry to be stars in the kingdom of God when there's only one that outshines the sun I'm telling you right now listen when he begins to move when he can be when he is allowed to be present he's brighter than the sun at noonday you can't see no stars when the sun is out we want we want father to be glorified in Jesus Christ only Christ Jesus will be revealed. It's only the power of the living God that can transform men's heart and change them and save them from a demon-cursed eternity. We begin to be revealed in the midst of that which he called glorious, his glorious church. There's only one re- remedy. There's only one remedy. Listen to me. There's only one remedy for the situation of man. As man fast approach complete apostasy. There's only one remedy. It is the church of Jesus Christ lit up with the fire of God the Holy Ghost. Just like Jesus said it. Just like Jesus did it. I want you to understand something. The church is the manifest person of Jesus in this world. Paul said the body of Christ, the very body of Christ. There is no church service unless it looks like one that Jesus did in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All the rest of it is vain witnesses, false witnesses, false witnesses. Jesus still does church like he did it when he walked the shores of Galilee, when he showed up in Jerusalem, when he showed up in Judea and Samaria, still does the same kind of church. If you want to understand what church looks like, you have to go into the holies of holies and look what Paul pointed out in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 22. You got to look in Isaiah chapter 6. You got to look in Revelation chapter 5. You got to see a whole bunch of excitement about a people who know their God, who are overwhelmed by the goodness and the mercies of the Lord that endures forever, about a powerful God who lives and reigns sovereignly, rules among men forever. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar may have been a very wicked man, but one day at least his eyes were open. I think Nebuchadnezzar came to know things that many people who've occupied a seat in the church have never come to understand. His eyes were open, and he recognized God rules in the kingdom of men. The Almighty God is sovereign. No one has power to resist His will. He takes the high and the mighty and he brings them down to to a low and base place. He takes that which is a base and he exalts it. Oh, 
Father, we pray, let your fire fall. Father, let your fire fall. Father, let your fire fall. Father, let your fire fall. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can, you can be seated. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We welcome all of you here. If you're here for your first, the first time, we just moved here into this little building. And it's taken us a little bit to get everything put together. We're glad you're here. Um, we just want you to understand, Father has a lot more for you than what you realized. He's got an abundant life for you. You don't have to live the life you've been living. My dad's a preacher. Preachers all the way back in my family that I know of in the United States of America alone since the early 1600s. But I still find every day that there's far more in God than I ever realized. See, we can know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of Him. That's a whole lot. See, the church is His body which is the full, fullness of Him that filleth all things. The church is supposed to look just and act like and have the expression of everything that you find in the holies of holies. And I'm not talking about a tabernacle made with hands. I'm talking about that glorious realm that exists forever before it is a crystal sea of glass that you can look down in throughout the ages. To the past and the very beginning of things. Nothing is hid from him with whom we have to do. Whom you will, every one of us will stand before and give account for our deeds done in our body, whether they be good or bad. The Father has given everybody an opportunity to be found in Jesus Christ. To be found in Him. Not having our own righteousness. The only kind of righteousness you could have ever had until Jesus came was the righteousness of keeping the law of God. And that law was beautiful. That law was glorious and that law was wonderful because that law represented who Papa is and what he wants and what he demands. And man was powerless to do it. But looked to his own human ability. God changed everything, made a way of escape for us. So we don't have to live under the wrath that abides upon sin and iniquity. Made a way for you and I to step into this glorious realm that he himself has existed in before there was ever anything forever and forever beyond that to not have to earn a place or position to not have to earn oneness with our unity with them to not have to earn his grace or favor or his mercy but to just have it freely given to us all we have to do is call upon the name of the Lord and he makes that happen then he establishes within us the righteousness of God and giving us the Holy Spirit the spirit of holiness the very spirit of God whose eyes are purer than to be holy and equal Give us the very spirit of Jesus Christ who's separate from sinners. Who's holy in all of his works, righteous in all of his works, and holy in all of his ways. And yet he's brought us in and been willing to keep teach us how to walk in them. And let even in the midst of many offenses. He's not as, as was in Adam. If you sin once, you cut off forever, and you'll see until redemption comes. But as allowed allowed a grace to reign under many offenses so long as we're willing to be taught of God and learn. No longer does it belong to just a few, but God has made a way for everyone where the Holy Spirit has now come. Jesus says, all that the Father has is mine. It belongs to me. John 16, 15. All that the Father has is mine. It belongs to me. And I tell you, the Holy Spirit will take that which belongs to me shall announce it to you. And at the announcing of his word, life comes. The announcing of his word, miracles take place. The announcing of his word, everything bows before his presence. He'll announce it to you, show it to you, as the King James says. Disclose it, transmit it, reveal it, unveil it. Woo. You see Jesus, my I don't know what happened to the seraphims, but sometimes I don't know what happened. Probably one time, somewhere back in the ancient past, they took a glimpse of Father and it was too much. And so they veiled their face forever with two wings. They veiled their face. 
too pure, too glorious, too holy. And they just scream, and they've been screaming ever since. Holy, holy, holy. It's the Lord God Almighty. And the, the ecstasy and the rapture of these who've never sinned, who've never committed iniquity, they fly with two wings, screaming, holy, holy, wonderful, glorious, beautiful. The majesty cannot be compared to anything. Now, this is true. I've seen it. Papa does give uh, dreams and visions. Against popular belief, he's not a prisoner in his own heaven. He's poured out his spirit in these last days upon all flesh. Anyone who's willing, before it, in times past, it was one or two, a prophet, a priest, a king. But now, to the basest of men, the most based of men, God pours out his holiness. He pours out his glory. He gives it freely to anybody who wants. Then after having tasted that glory, should we find ourselves stumbling up by the trickery of the enemy? The blood of Jesus cleanses us with a simple expression of repentance. Oh God, with the spirit of the sons on the inside saying, Abba, Papa, Papa. I like to hear the Chinese church cry out to God, the Father, Baba. Or the Papua New Guinean church, Papa God. I love to hear the expression that happens in third world countries where Jesus 20 years ago was not even named. 100 years ago, there was no one even in their nation that knew Jesus. Boy, the passion, I get to go back. I get to look at a people who've not been polluted by religion. Been touched by the fire of God. Been transformed by the Holy Ghost. Been given a new heart and a new spirit. It's so easy to get the grace of God extended to you. When you stand before, you may be a prophet, a mighty prophet, anointed of God like Isaiah. When you stand before his presence, you behold his glory. Ha! Huh. Something else will happen. He was anointed, but I, he got another glimpse of that realm. And he said, I'm unclean. And my lips say, unclean. I dwell in the midst of an unclean people. And the seraphim said, I got your answer. The seraphim, though he be holy, 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 though he be not in any way hardened by fire, could not touch the sacredness and the consecration of those coals upon the altar. So he took a, an instrument special for grabbing coals and grabbed it from off the altar of the Father. Put it upon the lips of Isaiah and said, you're clean. How much more the blood of Jesus will cleanse you? All you got to do is cry out. All you got to do is see the beauty and the splendor that has come to be revealed. The Holy Spirit has come to reveal Jesus. Without the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus cannot be revealed. And what we want is we want sterile, entertaining kind of meetings that offends no one. I tell you, the gospel is an offense to them that do not believe. I tell you, it's the power of salvation to everyone who's being called by the Father. I'm telling you, the Lord designed the best possible expression of heaven when he poured out the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. And he doesn't want it. And it doesn't take kindly to it being messed with and polluted with the mixtures of men. You hear me? Father is so full of love and mercy and grace that if we're just willing to be honest with him, if we're willing to be truthful with him, if we're willing to fall down at the mercy seat, He'll take us. He'll cleanse us. He'll wash us. He'll restore us. He'll keep us. He'll perfect us. He that began this good work will finish it. He's the author and he's the finisher. I'm listening. I'm being confident of this one thing. I know this, that the one who began a good work shall also finish it unto the day of Jesus Christ. To understand how that we kept by the power of God. But I tremble. I tremble like the mountains, like the hills in the presence of the Lord. I tremble. Because I know who he is. I know him. He's holy, holy, holy. I know him. And he will not tolerate and hates all death and all sin and iniquity. But has made a way for you and I to draw near. 
to come in and have access. He's the door. People have said thing. They want to interact with God based upon their own terms. That is the most craziest notion. It had to be born in hell. That we should state that God should be approached upon our terms. Jesus came and died for us at Calvary. He left all the glory of heaven. He left all the riches of the kingdom and became poor for our sakes that through his poverty we might become rich. Oh, the riches of God. I have failed the Lord many times, and he has kept me by his power. And every time I ever failed him, I cried out with agony because the Spirit of the Son cried out through me, Oh, God, let there be no iniquity or sin found here in this place. Why do intercede and because of my weaknesses and establish me by his intercession, by his perfecting work? He shall make your way perfect if you'd be willing to be led by him. But if you neglect so great a salvation, you shall surely perish. I don't care what name you name yourself by. I don't care what your doctrinal ideas may be. God's way is forever settled in heaven. You do not need a theological dictionary to figure it out. You don't need a degree in biblical scholarship to figure it out. He wrote to babes. This is not subjective. It's very objective. Jesus said, follow me. Anyone who will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. You can serve to Realms. You can't serve the realm of self and serve the realm of the Father. You'll hate the one and love the other. You'll despise the one and cleave to the other. I'm going to love God the Father and cleave to him. I'm going to despise, hallelujah, and not serve the other. In Jesus' name. And the beautiful thing of it is that Papa put it in me. Papa put it in anyone who's called upon his name. Everybody who knows God hears me. They do not who hear me do not hear God. Because I'm not speaking of myself, but the Father, which is the Spirit of the Father, which is in me, is talking, and His Word can validate everything that I'm saying. And if, if I should speak anything that is not according to this Word, it would be because there is no truth in me. And so, could there be established? For the prophetic Word is forever established. God's Word is forever sealed. Don't add to it, don't take away from it. People to add to it, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to open yourself up to deception, and that's why your name is going to be taken out of the little book to a blight. If you, if you take away from it, once again, you're going to be opening yourself up to the deception of the deceiver who's very good at his craft. And your name be taken out of the book of life because you'll err in your way. Don't add to it. Don't take from it. You know, listen. Let me just take the book of Romans. If you took the book of Romans and you sat down with the Holy Spirit and you begin to read it every day. You know how long it takes you to read? An average reader could read the book of Romans. An average reader could read the entire book of Romans in about an hour, most an hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half. And if you just would read the book of Romans every single day and let God speak to you and don't go and look it up in some reference book and some favorite theologian gets you have to look to the you know the eyes of some doctrinal bias but to sit there with the holy ghost before long it wouldn't be long and every every question would be answered to you the whole gospel would be revealed to you the problem is many people they begin to read the word of god with already a preconceived idea huh now, if we were doing math, we could get rid of that preconceived idea with a big F on your paper or with red marks all over the place. If we were doing history, you could do the same thing. My goodness, if we were doing quantum physics, you know, if we were doing photonics, we could really get rid of all your preconceived ideas because you'd go, wow, I don't know nothing about that subject. Wow, tell me more. And we could shape you into whatever we believed. The people sit around with all their preconceived ideas and it's so hard to hear God speak because the ears are stopped up with the things that belong to men's doctrines and ideas. Why don't you just, why don't you be willing to become a servant before the Lord Jesus Christ? Let him become the leader. Lay aside all your religion and all your doctrine and all your ideology and all your Christian philosophy. My goodness, there's a bunch of that. And there's a bunch of spoiling going on through philosophy. 
sit down with the Holy Ghost in a sincere and honest and true heart and start reading just the book of Romans. You could take any book in the Bible, do the same thing in the New Testament. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Old Testament, you just get a little part here and a little part there and a little part there and a little part. But the New Testament, oh, when Jesus came, he's the fullness of the word of God revealed. He is the revelation of God. He is the very declaration, the proclamation, the announcement, the unveiling. He's the word. He's the logos. Everything about God is defined in him. Everything about God is revealed in him. Everything about God is understood in him. He's the word. And no, no man can know him, but the Holy Spirit comes and reveals him. And I just so love the Holy Spirit. I love everything about him. Ah, there's a lot of people that they, they got a lot of things they don't like about the Holy Spirit. They wish it was over, you know, they wish that whatever God the Holy Ghost was doing ended 1900 years ago. I tell you, it didn't. They act like that, that the church that Jesus gave birth to on the day of Pentecost is, is gone forever. And we in a different church. I tell you, I'm in the same church the Apostle Paul's a part of. I'm in the same church that Jesus Christ is the head over. I'm a member of the same church that, be, that John, uh, the, the, the beloved disciple of Jesus Christ, and all the, all the apostles were the, the leaders in and are the leaders in many respects. Again, even today, because the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and holy prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. People come and listen to me preach, and I tell you, they got to go get counsel from religious leaders for years to get over what I say inside of one hour. They got to go get counsel from every theological dictionary they can find, and they got to get help for years to get over this one sermon from heaven. Because Father demands a relationship. He's going to get real personal with you. And religion will try to keep him far away. Far away. I just want to, just a little bit of God, just a little bit of Him. I'm not interested in all of Him. Him filling me up and baptizing me with His glory and being surrounded and living in heaven right now. A.B. Simpson, a great Presbyterian preacher who started the Christian Missionary Alliance Church, said, Jesus is heaven. And Jesus is mine, so I'm living in heaven today. There was a great move of God in the late 1800s where God began to raise up men like A.B. Simpson, E.W. Kenyon. The list goes on. So many leaders in what was called the Apostolic Holiness Movement. Brzee was a part of it, but Brzee became a Holy Ghost fighter. And so all of his lineages... Not all of his lineage, but most of his lineage are Holy Ghost fighters. True. A.B. Simpson wasn't a Holy Ghost fighter. But later on, many people became infected by religious ideas and religious notions that kept the Holy Ghost somewhere off elsewhere. And we could just continue on with our own life, wondering and saying, you know, about the mystical relationship with God and some esoteric interaction with the spirit of the living God. Nonsense. He's come to fill us. God's come to walk in us, move in us, live in us. Christ Jesus lives in me. He's, he's, his life is revealed in my life. The Holy Spirit is right here. I'm not lukewarm. I'm not cold. I'm on fire in the fire. And you should be able to tell it. And anybody who's on fire in the fire, I can tell because I know about the fire of God. I know about it personally. I've seen it in my own life. I look upon it in Jesus' life. I see it in the Apostle Paul. I see it on Elijah. I see it on Enoch. I see it on every witness that has ever testified concerning this holy fire. And so, therefore, God then validated me and gave me an ability by His anointing to be able to be a fire recognizer. <laughs> and everywhere I go, whatever nation, and they give me all, all these different nations, give me... Names. I've got a name in Chinese. I've got a name in Papua New Guinea. I've got a name in Nepal. I've got a name everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, it's firemen. <laughs> Everybody sees the fire. There's the fire of God. The Holy Ghost is there. And God hasn't just given it to one or two like he was in the days of old, or a prophet or a priest. He's poured it out on anyone who asks. You have to decide today whether you're lukewarm. Because Jesus said, I'll have no fellowship with you. I spew you out of my mouth. And I have to get a big mouthful of water to show how dramatic that is. Spew you out of my mouth. 
And it is an idiom, a Hebrew idiom, that says, I have no intimacy with you. I have no closeness with you. No oneness with that. Huh? We think that the Spirit of the living God is going to come and mix with man. There's no mixture in him. I heard somebody say, oh, I went to the meeting and there was a mixture. No, God don't mix with nothing. There's no mixture. It was religion and you have certain things that you, are, that you bear commonality with and that you can agree with and that's familiar to you and that's what you like and then the things that weren't familiar to you and that you don't agree with and that's what you said was the mixture. God has no mixture. Pure river flows from the throne of God into the life of anybody who wants it. Hallelujah. And marasto yelina maharasehdi. Balada beratai. See, uh, I've run a lot of people off and scared a lot of people, but I'm going to just tell you this. I'm going to say this. I feel to say it because of just talking about the mercy of God. I had a dream from heaven that Saddam, Saddam Hussein gave his life to the Lord Jesus. I had it. We had it set up that in October of the same year that we as a country when it invaded that nation, I had it set up to do a mass evangelism crusade in Baghdad, Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. I had dreams. Saddam's taking me around in his Jeep, showing me all these different things, saying, I'm giving this to Jesus. I'm going to pour this into the kingdom of God. We're going to sow this into the kingdom. Satan runs interference and gets together, gets to, gathers together people with his propaganda and his lies and been doing it for a long time. You begin reading about his propaganda and his lies in Isaiah chapter 14. Pretty radical, Ezekiel 28. Hmm? Revelation chapter 12. The mighty angels of God, the mighty angels, the mighty angels of God who beheld the face and the glory of God forever, he was able by his craft to turn them from God and to make them God-haters. Who do men think they are? God said that the elect of the elect should be deceived at that day we're not shortened. And I tell you right now, there is all kinds of signs and witnesses that we are now living in perilous times. We're seducing spirits and doctrines of men are spoiling the church. I'm telling you, there will come a great falling away one day. Where, uh, where, and, and you have to be, uh, first of all, you have to be saved and know God to fall away. The world can't fall away. There will become a great falling away to the point that Jesus said, will there be any faith when the Son of Man comes? But before that, there's going to be a great revival. And I'm right in the big middle of this great revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are so many in the nations who have never heard not one time. Not one time. America had a great place. Russia, the, the former Soviet Union, before it was the former Soviet Union, it was Russia, was the evangelist of the nations of the earth. They carried the mantle for a long time. The UK carried the mantle for a long time. I can go back through history. America had a place with God. America has fallen from that place. Look at the television. Look at what our government, look at our legislative system. Look at what our government announces. How we, they're demanding in the, United, in the United States and especially in the state of California that we call evil good and good evil. They demand that we call the union of homosexuality a woman with a woman, a man with a man, equivalent to that which God created in a man with a woman. And they said if we don't say that it's, that it's equivalent, then somehow we're wrong and want to teach our children this. That's tyranny. You think that Papa's going to let that stand? You think that Father, with all the merchandising that is going on in the church, with all the lukewarmness that's going on in the church, that somehow Papa's going to go ahead and continue to use us? He's raising up a mighty army in China. He's raising up a mighty army and the unreached people groups of the nations right now. Right now, there is a fire of revival burning in North Korea. Deborah, I, I think Deborah might be watching me right now. She's a prophetess in South Korea. T.L. Osborne prophesied to her in the 70s of what God would do with her in, in North Korea. We know that North Korea will capitulate without, a, without the firing of a single weapon. Why? Because there's a Holy Ghost revival. Back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, there was a great revival in Korea. Then it was one nation. They were the people of the Holy Ghost who gave birth to the heavenly people of northern China. <laughs> Woo! 
My goodness, there is a relighting of that fire. Kim Sung Il took all the songs of the church, took Jesus out, put his name in, but he's dead and Jesus is alive. He's dead. He's dead. Dead in his trespasses and sins. Hell was moved at his coming. Watch what takes place. Iran. Holy Ghost revival is going on in Iran. Because many have been afraid to go. Jesus went himself and appeared to many. If you watch on our YouTubes, you'll be amazed. If you look at the statistics, how many people from Saudi Arabia watches our YouTubes? Hallelujah. I was back a part of those who were going in and preaching in Saudi Arabia in the late 1990s. And back in 1998, 1999, those who were going into Mecca, Saudi Arabia. I got this great missions plan for places like Mecca, Saudi Arabia, Benghazi, Libya, Damascus, Syria, uh, Tehran, Iran. I, I, I got these great mission plans and strategies. I just go in. I appear, I preach the gospel, they try to get me, I disappear. I get translated back in. Oh, Len, you don't know how many times Jesus disappeared. He had the ability to disappear. When a bunch of people got a hold of you and they mad at you, huh? they got a hold of you and you slip or pass through their hands, as the King James says, you just disappeared. <laughs> and Jesus said, these works are greater works. Jesus was constantly having to slip through people's hands. It just disappeared out of their sight. Translation is a part of it all. And first records of it was back in the days of Enoch. <laughs> it was ongoing in Elijah's life. It was happening in Jesus, in Philip. He got translated. I'm here translated too. I'm the holy thing back from God. I belong to him. I'm here for the purpose of the kingdom. And that's it. I don't love my life even unto the death. Hallelujah. I overcome by the blood of Jesus, the word of my testimony, because I do not love my life even unto the death. I don't have anything about my life that I enjoy because I traded mine in for the one that Jesus gave to me. I no longer live. Jesus lives. I'm not my own man. I'm not my own purpose, a person anymore. I'm not doing my own purposes. I'm not living my own life. I am here for the purpose of God alone. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in this earth as it is in heaven, Father. I'm not waiting to die to go to heaven. I'm living in heaven right now because I live in the manifest presence of a living God who's put this fire on the inside of my belly and I'm not going to be quiet no matter who says I have to. The only way anybody can shut me up or shut me down is they're going to have to kill me. And until, you know, things change in the United States, I got plenty of freedom here. And the Lord up to this point has protected me in every nation that I've gone to. Praise God. Hallelujah. Joshua said to me, it was here on Wednesday night, Joshua said, listen, you got to let me start taking care of you now. Brother Yoon doesn't know anything about security, and you're going to get in trouble the way things have been going. I said, look, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy to, uh, thank you, brother, for loving me. You want to take care of me. I thank you so much for blessing me. But actually, there's one who takes care of me, who does a far better job than your great network of security, though he's been doing security and his family's been doing security for the church since before the Cultural Revolution. Because he, he's not only a preacher, his daddy and his grandpa and his great-grandpa. Some uh, the first preacher is from Hudson Taylor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got the security. I got the security of the believer. I'm in Christ Jesus and he's in me. He's taught me how to fear him. He's taught me how to trust him. He's taught me how to walk in the spirit and live by the spirit. All by his grace. And he wants to teach you the same thing. And all you have to do is engage God. And the engagement simply begins by you calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the greatest name that's ever been. You know the person who translated for Brother Joshua on Wednesday night? That's the guy that I told you about that we stood on the border of North Korea and I said, you translate word for word. In all of it, he, he, you know, I started getting to tell it because as soon as he saw me, he said, I've, I've never seen anything like that in all the years that I've been on the border of China and North Korea. A North Korean came over. First thing he did is he pulled out his pen of Kim Sung-il because, of course, Kim Sung-il was still alive at that time. 
And I said to him, I said to that guy who translated for Joshua, I said, you translate word for word everything I'm going to say. And I just begin to say, I just begin to tell him about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I begin to say, do you know that the, the, and I got to about the, I didn't even get Jesus out. But Jesus came real quickly, but he was already sobbing. Power of God transformed the power of the name of Jesus. Satan has done everything he could do through abuse and lies and religion to make that name of none effect in the Western world. But his name is still so powerful. There's a name that is above every name. His power that is above every power. He's a head over all principality, power, and mind, every dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world that is to come. Hallelujah. And Father has given him to be the head over his church, who is the fullness of, fullness of him that filleth all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Before the Antichrist will have his way before the satanic religion. There's, the world is moving to a satanic religion. The whole world will have a cult of satanic worship. We see the rise of it like never before. Even so much so that the world will take a satanic mark in their head and in their forehand. No one knows what that is. We don't base, a, we don't base anything on one verse of scripture. People run around 666, it's just one verse of scripture on that. People don't even know what they're talking about. doesn't know what it is. We do know it's a mark. We do know it has to do with the eighth kingdom. It has to do with the worship of, uh, of, this, of Satan himself. But before Satan has his way in Egypt, there's going to be great, 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 great revival in Egypt. There's been, great, there's been wonderful moves of God in Egypt. I've been, I've been out in the backwoods of Egypt. It's, you know, you say, well, I went to Mississippi and it's 60 years behind. I went to Minya, Egypt, and it's 2,000 years behind. Huh? And a tent was set up in the middle of the town, a gospel tent, and it was jammed back full. And that was back in 2001, 2002. There's great news of God going on all over the place down there, people. I'm going to tell you right now, the people in the church need to get out and see more what God's doing. They think that all that's going on is what's taking place in the United States of America. I'm telling you, this nation backslid. I'm telling you, the church of this nation backslid. And it best lukewarm. It's true true it's true oh, uh, you need to know that so that you can begin to cry out for revival huh I'm not like some people say it's all over no I'm believing for I'm believing for a revival God told us to make disciples out of nation I've got power we have authority to make disciples out of nations not just individuals nations Hallelujah. Now, four fathers came here and they made a disciple out of this nation. And that's why there's scripture written on all of our monuments in Washington, D.C. and every other capital city. Huh? I can't help it that people came along and tried to change the history. I can't help it that evil men or, or happened to accompany uh, among them and did her terrible and evil things that folks, folks wanted to focus on. It has nothing to do with the facts. We even put his... We even stamped his name upon our money. Somebody wants to say it belongs to some kind of, a, you know, evil thing. Forget about it. God did a great work in this nation, and I believe he's going to do it again. But it takes the church on fire. Huh? The angel appeared to Cornelius' house, and he didn't preach. It's not time for angels to preach the everlasting gospel. They'll preach during the tribulation when the church is not around. I not only got that from the Bible, I got that right out of heaven. There is a catching way. Somebody said on the television the other night, oh, there's no rapture in the church isn't in the Bible. Man, you need to, sh you need to shut your, your ministry down because you, first of all, you don't even know what you're talking about because it is in the Bible. There's many catching ways in the Bible. Give me a break. And then everybody's going to listen to you because you're coming as an authority because you've got some degree. Forget about it. There's a lot of people with a degree. There's a lot of people with a medical degree that I wouldn't let them... I would advise no one to let them touch them. There was guys that I went to school with, they were so dumb that ultimately got a medical degree. They had no practical application knowledge. They couldn't work their way out of a wet paper bag and they got an MD. And I'm going to let them operate on me? Give me a break. Are you listening to me? Same thing goes on with theology. Are you listening to me? Better watch out. You better be careful how you hear. You better believe what Jesus said. Huh? You better count God true and every man a liar. You better count God true. <laughs> you better count God true. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Dear people, listen. Father loves us so much that he made sure that we can get this. He sent the Holy Ghost, but if you resist the Holy Ghost, if you won't hear the Holy Ghost, if you're going to be able, if you're going to, if you're going to harden your heart against the Holy Spirit, how are you ever going to know who Jesus is? How are you ever going to understand the Word of God? Because He's the one who manifests the Word from Genesis chapter one all the way through to Revelation twenty-two. From in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. To the grace of God be with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. It was the first words and the last words of the Bible. Somebody said, well, the Bible is the most, uh, most well-sold book and more copies of the Bible sold than any other book uh, on the planet. Well, it's the least read one, too. What a paradox. Huh? It's a religious icon. Okay, I got me a Bible. I, I got a Bible. Uh, I must be saved. I got a Bible. The Bible just sit right here. Bible. Forget about it. It's not, it's not what's happening here. Huh? Papa, when he gave us a new birth, he wrote his word upon our hearts and upon our minds so that we would do them. Huh? And we open up this word of God and God now describes to us everything that he wrote upon our hearts and upon our minds. And when we read it, our hearts leap within us. Our heart, we read it, our hearts, ah, we read it. Ah, we read our hearts leap within us. We read it, we get broken, we fall down our knees. Oh God, that's the way we react. That's the spirit of the son. Oh God. Oh, I love you. I want to know you. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. You know, the heart in our hearts go, I don't believe that. Because I know of one extant manuscript that really reflects the autograph and it doesn't say that. The rest of the scripture to your own destruction. Uh, just wrestling the scripture to your own destruction. Uh, Jesus is the manifest word. There's no mistake in Jesus. There's no mistake in what he said. There's no mistake. If you took Matthew chapter 6, you had nothing else. There are places right now, they only have one page of the Bible. If you've got one page of the Bible, you're it. You want to have a big church? Just have one page of the Bible in certain place, some places because everybody who's interested is going to come because you're the only one who's got one page of the Bible. One page of the Bible. Just imagine you had one page of the Bible and it was Matthew chapter 6 and you read it and you lived by it. Your whole life would be changed. Your whole life. Suddenly when you stop just being a hearer of the word only and you became a doer because the hearers are not justified but the doers. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you're going to be a doer as well as a hearer. By the power of the living God, I set you free from every lie of Satan, from every power of bondage, from everything that Satan would try to do to imprison you and entangle you. Now what are you going to do with your freedom? Because some people are let out of prison just to go and create more havoc. Father, let you out of prison so that you can live in this life so abundant. Amen. Amen. Let me just read a couple verses of scripture to you. Ready? Ready? See, as we've talked about Romans, let's just go over Romans. You know what? Just open up any place in the Bible and it'll be beautiful. We can preach on that. That'll be the powerful word of God. Any place in the Bible. Hallelujah. But right now, I want to open up to Romans chapter 3, verse 25. You ready? Whom, speaking of Jesus Christ, I'll go ahead, verse 24. Being justified freely. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Justified freely by his grace. Saddam Hussein could have easily been justified freely. And I don't know. He may have called upon the name of the Lord in the prison. I don't know. It would have been great if he would have given testimony to it because I know some ministers who were meeting with him for several years before all that stuff went down. I don't know what ultimately happened to him. But it didn't matter who, how evil, how... Somebody said, oh, he's done terrible wrong things. So have you. So have I. What terrible wrong thing would separate you from the possibility of justification by the working grace of God Almighty through Jesus Christ, our Savior? Justified freely. Even if you fell into sin just this past week, 
If somehow you fell into sin because you were allowed Satan to deceive you and you've not known how to walk in the character and nature that God has given you, Christ Jesus, he'll just he'll wash you, cleanse you. He'll take a hold of you and say, now let me lead you and show you how to walk uprightly. And walk before me and be perfect. Somebody said, oh, you can't be perfect. I tell you, I want to be. I want to be. Because Jesus said, be perfect even as your Father in heaven is in is perfect and I just saw I want to be perfect for him. I'm in love with him. Huh? Hallelujah. Hall don't argue about whether or not you can be. You should want to be. I said don't argue about whether or not you can be. You should want to be. God's came and given to us a grace and a divine ability to know him, to see things the way he sees them. And when you see things the way he sees them, you'll do things the way he does them. If your heart's right, Satan's heart, we don't know his name. You, well, the, probably the closest thing we understand his name is called the morning s star. That's what he was called. That's what Lucifer means. It means morning star. Kokav Boka in Hebrew language. Morning star. So before God held, beheld the brightness of the glory of God till his heart became deceived. Because he started wanting more for himself. His heart became wrong. But ah, you walk with the Lord, the more you, the more you see him, you see and understand the way he understands things. That's what he's given us. He's given us his understanding. He's given us his knowledge. That's the knowledge of God. People talk about the word of knowledge. That's the knowledge of the Father. That's far more than giving people their name, number, and address. That's knowing what Father knows seeing things the way Father sees them. And then you'll feel about them and do the, what Father, feel the way the Father feels and do what Father do, does if your heart's right. And he's made a way for us to have a, heart, right, a right heart. He's given us a pure heart, a clean heart. I'll give you a new heart, a new spirit, says God. Take away the stony heart, the heart that cannot be yielded to me, the heart that can't be sensitive to me. I'll give you a heart of flesh. I'll give you a sensitive heart. God's calling you. He wants to give you a sensitive heart. If you've not, if you've not known the ways of God, if, say if you believe that you're a Christian, but you continue on in sin and you continue on in evil and iniquity and you have no repentance about it and your heart's not broken over it and you've somehow condoned it, you have backslidden, you're not right with God and we're inviting you to come and be restored and be, and be transformed by the power of God and get a new heart and a new spirit. Because they will, anyone whose heart, anyone's spirit is joined unto the Lord, they one spirit with the Holy Spirit. That's what God said. So that we no longer walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. For we not in the flesh, but in the spirit. That's what Paul said. True. Right there in Romans 8. Huh? It's not about, I don't think so much about how many times you mess up. I think it's rather about that you don't want to. I think it's what it's about more than anything else. Huh? I believe that God can take you and place you into a position with him and has and does and will when he gives, because he's given to us, he's renewed us and, is, and recreated us in his own image and after righteousness and true holiness so that we can walk in the spirit and live by the spirit. I mean, talking about full of the Holy Ghost, baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about full of the spirit of holiness and baptized in the spirit of holiness. I mean, come on. You're filled with the spirit of holiness, baptized in the spirit of holiness, speak by the spirit of holiness, have unlimited rivers and expression of the spirit of holiness coming out of you and you can't walk right with God, give me a break. That don't add up. That's deception. To say that somehow you can have that kind and that expression and that level of interaction with God where Jesus said, you're one with me even as I'm one with the Father. Just as the Father is in me, I'm in you. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. He lives in me. This is the new covenant. I will walk in them. I will dwell in them, says the living God. Come on, see through their eyes, walk through their feet, hand through, touch through their hands. True. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse seventeen. I know there's there's one or two people tweeting scriptures as I speak to them right now. I, I, I've ministered a lot of verses of scripture here this morning. They're gonna shut down Twitter on them. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Ghost only talks the Word of God. The Holy Ghost only talks the Word of God. I'm not here to tell you, give you some motivational speech. Huh? Tell you about what Isaac, Isaac what um, uh, Eisenhower did. I'm here to tell you about what Isaac did. 
Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I like that commercial where they say Pinocchio had been a terrible motivational speaker. <laughs> Because he starts telling people things aren't true. And every time he says it, his nose keeps growing longer and longer. Yeah, he starts off with a regular nose at the beginning of the motivational thing. And by the end of it, his nose is like out to, you know, two, three foot. We're here to tell you about getting changed. We're not here to tell you that you're good. We're here to tell you that only God is good. And he wants to live fully in you. Huh? We're here to tell you that he wants to completely take over your life and he doesn't want any sin or iniquity in it because God says his wrath abides upon sin and iniquity. Nothing's changed. His wrath abides upon homosexuality, lesbianism, fornication, lasciviousness. His wrath abides upon it. You might be accepted in the United States of America, but you will be damned by God Almighty. That's what he said. Because his, his wrath abides upon sin and iniquity. People need to wake up. God's made a way of escape. But you're not walking in with your le lesbianism. You're not walking in with your adultery. You're not walking in with your lasciviousness. You're not walking in with your hatred and your evil speaking. You're not coming in has to be erased and removed from off your life, cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You watch what happens. You watch what happens. Because God's going to make a whole bunch of people out there that are nothing but a worldly, satanic mess right now. All of a sudden, they're going to hear this kind of preaching, and there's going to be a great awakening. There's going to be a great coming in. There's going to be people who want to escape from their iniquity, who are not going to just ride in the fence. The fire of God's burning in his church, that there's not going to be wrong examples in his church. The people that come out of a world of iniquity, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, changed by the power of the Holy Ghost, aren't going to have wrong models in the church so they can continue on in sin. God forbid. We've been delivered from it. We now, we now walk in this abundance of grace that is in Christ Jesus that gives us the ability to learn all the ways of God, to be taught all the ways of God. We don't need anybody to teach us this one reality that we are to dwell and abide and live in Jesus. And what does that look like? Go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, and you want to understand that? He said, behold, I come in the complete total volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. And everything Father ever desired for man, as he's expressed it from Genesis chapter 1 all the way through the Bible, that's what Jesus did. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is an abbreviated expression of that. And as John said, if all the books that should be written were written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain them. So what did get written down is there were special purposes in our life. Hallelujah. He was raised up to die no more, and we've been raised up together with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Ooh, the in inward resurrection. If you then be risen with Christ, here's what you'll do. You'll seek those things which are above. You'll have a hunger in your heart for God. You seek the Lord and you shall find him. And that's not just one event. Because any time, any place you start seeking God, manifest presence of God is going to be revealed if your heart's right with God. If you come to him, believe that he is. If you have that same working faith that was in Christ Jesus that was expressed also in his disciples and his apostles. It's also expressed in me. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh. Being justified freely by his grace. That gets me excited. I just stay right there. I'm justified freely by his grace. If you don't have anything to get happy about, just start thinking about being justified freely by his grace, being made righteous freely. You don't have to earn righteousness. You don't have to prove righteousness. You don't have to work your way towards ultimately you could have an event like Moses had with God. He said, you can have one. I'll give it to you. I'm pouring out my spirit upon all flesh. It's yours freely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's mine, but I'm a bad boy. Oh, you can become a good one. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. He'll take your life and he'll baptize you in himself. 
so that you will not be found in you, but now and being found and be found in Christ Jesus and being found in Christ Jesus, not having my own righteousness, which is by the law for the law did produce righteousness. And I, people talk about legalism. Give me a break. I've never seen any Christians in any way attempting legalism. That means to attempt to be justified by the works of the law or by the works uh, that God described through Moses. I've never seen anybody that way. I don't see Christians with that kind of passion. I've not seen any legalism. Somebody trying to be justified by such, ad, uh, such an adherence to the law like the Haradim or the Orthodox Jews. I'll take you, show you some Haradim. I'll show you some Orthodox Jews. No, they're, 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 they're consecration to, the, the, uh, to living absolutely according to the law of Moses is, absol- is amazing. Amazing. I've not seen any, legal, any legalism in the church. I've seen the opposite. What we're talking about is not legalism. We talk about the righteousness which is by Christ Jesus. Huh? We're slaves of righteousness and have our fruits in the holiness. You know where that scripture is? Huh? Do you know where that one is? But we are the servants of righteousness and have our fruits unto holiness. Because to whomever you yield your members unto, you are the slave of that person. Whether of righteousness unto God or unrighteousness unto sin. To demonic, to demonic realms. That's why John said that he that sins is of the devil. Because without, you can't sin without participating with the demon spirit. That's why I said it. Now I know your theologians were going to try to go scramble to find some way to salve their own iniquity and salve yours too. But God don't need no explaining. You don't need no explaining. Simply believe it like a little child and obey it and say, oh, I'm, that's, that's the way it's supposed to be. Oh, he, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. He that sinners of the devil. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. First John 3, 7 and 8. That doesn't need any explaining. That simply needs obeying. Just simply need to agree with God. You agree with them and faith will begin to work. And when faith works, a miracle will come. And the miracle of, God, of Holy Ghost change, power of God at work. Oh, my God, I'm on the daily time. I am, a, I am a fire in the midst of this church burning because he lit me on fire. And we're going to burn up all the chaff. Every false doctrine and going to be burned up. We are hammer. That's why my mama named me Mark. That's what it means. Hammer. We a hammer. Bust all the rocks in two. Amen. We are rake that doth have teeth. And we will thresh the mountains. Hallelujah. Mountain threshing, rock breaking, chaff burning, anointing. Hallelujah. 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 I'm a terror to the Christian religion in the United States of America. An ambassador of Christ Jesus. A minister of the things which God teaches. Hallelujah. And not men. Hallelujah. Praise God. Tonight, God's God's seated me with this powerful message. You have to come back to hear it. Powerful. Holy Ghost put some big time responsibility on the shoulders of anybody who wants to participate with a moving of God to break off the yoke that will ultimately destroy this nation and the people in it. Unless that yoke is broken, I'm telling you, the hour is late. It's perilous times. We stand right now at the edge of total disaster. The only remedy, the only salt, the only possible preservation of this nation is a move of God in the midst of his people, a revival that is more impossible than ever before because 200 years ago there was a great fear of God in the land today there's very little fear of God 200 years ago I don't care what denomination you belong to sin was wrong and for you to participate in it meant that you were damned that doesn't exist anymore or rarely to rarely exist people are justifying more and more every day every form of sin and iniquity huh Say, we're going to continue in sin that grace may abound. That's been around for a long time. That's been around for a long time. God forbid, how can you that have been delivered from sin continue any longer therein? 
But praise God, after Paul said that in Romans 6, 1 and 2, John says, if you sin, we have an advocate. We have an intercessor. We have a mercy seat. We have one who takes a petition on our behalf. If we said my blood. Father, I know that what Mark did is worthy to be cut off. Even as Adam was cut off. But here's my blood and he's petitioned my blood. Worked a miracle on his behalf. And for, for Jesus' sake, Father, who no man can know but the Son, you think it's glorious to see Jesus, just wait till he opens up your eyes and reveals the Father to you. Just wait. Just wait. Today, you could be as Isaiah and recognize that you're unclean, that there's an uncleanness in your life. And you can have it, you can have it purged. 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 Erased. Eliminated. Not by a call from off the altar, but by the blood of Jesus. How hard? Not at all. It's not hard at all. He's made it so simple. He had to. I haven't gotten to this place yet in the scripture, but Romans chapter 10 talks about how simple he made it. He made it so simple. We're all the Jews. We're striving to come into this union with God, to come into this mystical oneness, to have this place like Moses had, to be on the base of God, to be worthy of the gift of holiness which God had given them. And Paul comes along and says, all you must do is simply speak it out and call upon the name of the Lord, and you're going to have the righteousness of God. You'll be saved. You'll have everything that you could possibly ever imagine in God made it all possible through the foolishness of preaching, as it were. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, it can't be that easy. Oh, but it is. He's made, oh, he's made it so easy. <laughs> he came and gave to us his own life that we now can have it not by any works of righteousness which we have done, but because his great love wherewith he has loved us, all we have to do is say, yes, I want that. I want to be with you. I don't want to identify with this group or that group or the other group. I want to identify with your group, your family, your kingdom, your company. Oh, God. Everybody's looking for identity. God's given us the best one. Everybody's looking for a group. I tell you, this is the group. Hallelujah. Go join the Orthodox Jews. Go join the Haradim. They'll load you with so much work you won't come out. To see daylight for a long time, then you'll still be a second-class citizen, third-class citizen among them. Not Jesus. Not the righteous man Jesus. Not the king of glory. You call upon him and it makes you one with him instantaneously. And then whether or not you value it, or, then that will, do, that will ultimately result in the, the outworking of the degree, the manifestation of his power and grace in your life. And every day he'll work with us and he'll plead with us and he'll draw us and he'll love us into every bit yieldedness and consecration to him. So, he whom God, look at this, he justified us freely, having redeemed us, the blood of redemption, my kinsman redeemer, the blood of redemption, Hallelujah. redeemed unto God, Having a place to walk with him, let your garden blossom, oh God. This place that you now walk in, this paradise of my life that you've made, a fit dwelling place for you to live. Hallelujah. Being redeemed that through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be the propitiation, the mercy seat, the one who grant who, who produces a petition on our behalf through faith in his blood. And I have so many verses of scripture like this to minister faith in his blood. <sighs> faith. I am washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the land, and my garments 
a spotless, I have not one stain of sin. Hallelujah. I am one. I am ready now to be presented before him without spot or blemish. I am washed. Are you washed? In faith in the blood of Jesus. In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. And my, my soul, my spirit is spotless. They're whiter than snow. I am washed. Can't you feel his presence? Isn't it beautiful? Hallelujah. So, Grace is wonderful. Grace goes to the doctor. She says, in, in, because of a pacemaker, and she says, well, doc, I'm just believing that my heart's healed. And he said, well, it's a good thing because your pacemaker's been off for 10 months. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yet all the results were coming in like it was working, huh? Because it wasn't working. The heart, new heart was working. Right? Hallelujah. His presence, his manifest presence is, does, does. You know, I, I'm going to say this. I don't pray until I feel the anointing. Until I hook up and make a connection with the Holy Ghost. Then I feel the anointing. Now, my prayers ascend by the Spirit. I used to, I'm not saying that you need to be that, do that, because I'm telling you, when God's moving on your heart, you're right there. You may be backslidden. You may be lost. You may have never called upon the name of the Lord in your life. All you got to do is begin to say, Help me, Jesus. And that will go right into heaven. Because that's another realm. How far away is heaven? About that far. About that far. Ah, heaven's not a planet far, far away. One day, this, the, 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 we're about cloud level. It'll be rolled back like a scroll, and you'll see him sitting upon the throne, Jesus at his right hand. And the rebellion of men and the sin of men will come, become so bad before that day, Revelation chapter 6, that rather than to repent, they'll see him, and they'll want the rocks to fall upon them, to hide them from his face. They don't want his presence. I want his presence. Right now, we want his presence. Right now, the presence of God is available. There's nothing like the manifest presence of Jesus. I tell you, the absolute and total absence of the manifest presence of God is hell. Therefore, any absence of the manifest presence of God is a form of hell. And God doesn't want us, any of us living in hell. Therefore, he seated us together with Christ Jesus in the heavenly realm. It's the realm of the Holy Ghost, you see. It's the realm of the Spirit. Hallelujah. It's the realm of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Jesus right now, he's not going to be king later. He's king right now. He's not going to rule later. He's ruling right now. And he's supposed to be ruling in his church. And he is ruling his church because he has his church. And I'm a member in it. And I see some members in his church sitting around here. Hallelujah. And this is a church that he lit on fire with his presence. It is a, it is a candlestick right now before the, before the throne of God. I'm a star in his hand. And I want to be hidden there forever. Amen. Hallelujah. You're the company of uh, saints, the household of faith. Stones, living stones, gathered round Christ Jesus, the cornerstone, built up for a spiritual habitation of God by the Holy Ghost, that you may offer sacrifices acceptable by Jesus Christ unto the Father. Forever. What a church. Oh, living stone, come gather round the cornerstone. Come offer up that spiritual sacrifice of praise. Let the glory that is placed here, this manifested power, be seen upon the life in every place. Hallelujah. Get ready. Get ready. Because the power of God's coming to you. Those who seek him, those who love him, those who want to be used by him, those who seem to have too many disappointments. You stepped out in faith to walk upon the water and you sank. I'm telling you, the power of God is coming. The day of the Lord is here at hand. Father is about to release a great anointing upon his army that they might march throughout the land. Hallelujah. Monday, Koshe. There will be a fire, a burning, a glory of God before them. And though the place be like a garden of Eden, every plant 
plant and everything should be consumed so that behind them is as a desolate wilderness so complete the harvest will be that there will not even be a gleaning. Watch what happens. This is an army baptized in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. One of the last things Jesus said before he ascended up into heaven, you should be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days from now, Acts 1-5, you should be baptized. Hallelujah. And when the day of Pentecost was come, the day of the giving of the first fruits, hallelujah, when the day of Pentecost was come, the Lord gave us the purchase down payment that we are his possession, that he has bought us with the price. He says, this is just the earnest money. This is just the 1% money of that which you're going to get, that which belongs to you as heirs and go inheritors with Jesus. All oh, rejoice, redeemed, ransomed of the Lord. Rejoice. Rejoice for the day of your habitation. Not visitation, for the day of your habitation is at hand. It's here right now. Just lift your hands. Ha ha! Ha 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 ha! Hallelujah! Father, I thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost! I thank you for the fire of your presence. I thank you for the grace that you've given. I thank you for the transformation of every life and every heart. I thank you, Father God, that sin will no longer have the upper hand upon any person in this place, that every work of darkness will be forever broken and erased in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of the living God. Jesus, we put all our trust in you. All our faith, God, that you have given to us is in your blood that has cleansed us. Hallelujah. And just as the priest came out of the temple on the day of atonement, on the day of purgation, on the day of Yom Kippur, and all the people shouted that the sacrifice was accepted. Yes, they could live in your presence for one year more. Now, oh God, we shout and sing. We testify that song of the redeemed. Our sins are washed away. Our place in God has been purchased, established forever in his presence, kept by the power of God. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Mahashakana, Mahashakana say, Mahashakana, Mahashakana is say, Mahashakana is say, Hatoya, Mahashakana, Mehitaha, Mahashakana, Hamoshakaya, Lehipaha, Halaboshaka, Mahashakana, changed by the power of God, Mahashakana Bahade, Mahashakan Te Nahashaha, Mahashakana Bite Dohorai, Mahashakimanda Hikashaha, Mahashakando Logosihite, Mahashakambala Hase, Halamanja, blessed, blessed, blessed the baby in the womb, Basakana, blessed from the crown of the head to the soul. You will be blessed, increased, increased, uh, increased, yes, more and more by the power and the authority of the Word of God and the Spirit of the Lord. Menete. <laughs> Changed by the power of the living God. Changed by the power of the living God. Say it on in Negega. God said, I shall be your God, and you shall be my people. I shall be your God, JJ, and you shall be my people, my person. Mongjekana, Liridayo, so, Mande Eshe. I command a blessing upon this house. I break the stronghold of every curse. I break the stronghold of every claim of Satan. In the name of Jesus, the seal of the Holy Ghost. Anada, Arastad Ananda. The change now in Jesus' name. Change now in Jesus' name. The power of the living God in Jesus' name. The power of the Most High in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus, I in the Mangataya. Father, you thank you for your anointing, your blessing right here in Jesus' name. Lord Staramani. Now, now, now in Jesus' name. Now, now in Jesus' name. Changed miracle 
a miracle, a miracle, a miracle, a miracle. Everybody stand with me. Stand with me. I want everybody in this place to say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I, belong I belong to you. I am yours. I am yours. You are mine. Do with my life whatever is pleasing to you. From this day forward, all I want to do is follow you, Lord Jesus. I renounce everything in this world. I want nothing to do with a fellowship of demon spirits. I want nothing to do with the things of this world. I come to you, Father, for your sanctuary. I come to you, Father, for your protection. I say, Father, all the things that you want what I want. And I thank you for keeping me by your power. I thank you for establishing me in righteousness. I thank you for establishing me in your way. Now, Lord, I ask you to baptize me afresh. Fill me. Fill me, filled, 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 filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the presence of the Lord, filled with that overflow we got his power, filled with the glory, filled with the majesty, filled with the goodness, filled with the goodness. Filled with goodness, filled with goodness, filled with goodness, filled with goodness, filled, 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 filled with the joy unspeakable, filled, 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 filled with the peace that passes understanding. Filled, 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 filled with goodness of the Lord. Feel the love that goes beyond all knowledge. Feel the love of Christ. Feel, 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 feel with the goodness. Feel, feel, feel with the goodness. Full of goodness and truth. Hallelujah. He is full of goodness and truth. Long suffering, merciful, slow to anger. Full of goodness and truth. Feel, 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 feel the life of the Father. I'm filled, 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 filled up the life of the Father. Feel, 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 feel the life of the Father. Feel, feel, feel with the life of the Spirit. <laughs> feel, 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 I'm a heavenly man in a heavenly land in a heavenly realm for a heavenly purpose. Not of this world, not of this world, not of this world, not of this world. I'm a heavenly man with a heavenly purpose, not of this world. Hallelujah. Well, if you haven't been changed by the power of God, then I want you to know that change is available for you right now. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. You don't have to do anything special other than simply believe upon the name of Jesus, and that's special. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, 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 and Father's given you the capacity to believe, so you have to, if you don't receive this grace, you actually have to resist the faith and the belief that he has supplied to you, for he's given a measure of faith to every man. Hallelujah. 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 Today is an appointed day for you. I don't know of any other appointed day. I don't know of any. There's not necessarily a promise for one. For today is the day of salvation. The Lord didn't talk about the tomorrow. It belongs to him. What you do have is right now you have a grace. You have an opportunity. You have a call of God unmistakable. He beckons you come. 
beckons you. If you're watching me right now by the web, he beckons you come. If you're watching by YouTube, he beckons you come. He refuses no man. He loves you as much as he loves anyone. Father loves you like he loves his only begotten son. All you need to do is call upon the name and begin to love him back so that you may enjoy all that goodness that he has for you. What will you do with Jesus? Will you say, not today, Lord? I'm not making you Lord today. You can be Lord maybe some other day, but to, I found better things to do with my life than you. What will you do with Jesus? Will you say to the preacher, oh, away with him for today? Or will you say, oh, he is Lord, and I want him to be my Lord. He is God Almighty, and I want him to be my God Almighty. He is Savior, and I want him to be my Savior too. It's just that simple, just that easy. What will you do with Jesus? Ha, ha. Hallelujah. Proba kateyekaro. Osikaranekayetatohi. Father, I thank you that today that every person in this place will not turn it back towards you, but they turn their heart towards you. Maybe there's things that they didn't understand there's about the, the, what was said or, or what, what has taken place. But Father, I pray in Jesus' mighty name, every eye be open, that every ear will be able to hear, that every heart would be able to understand, that by the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, everyone would be able to begin to comprehend these glorious things that you have done for those who are redeemed by your blood, who have been made the righteousness of God by the righteousness that you work for us through your love. Hallelujah. If there's anybody here you want me to pray with you for anything, spiritual, physical, material, I'm happy to pray with you. Circumstantial, I don't know, whatever's going on around you, I'm happy to pray with you. The Spirit of the Lord has given to us a privilege, a call, a special calling and a special anointing. It's not subjective. Once again, I didn't make it up. John 15, 16, whatever we ask the Father, he will do it. I just so happen to believe that, and therefore I can, re I can function in it because it's a reality to me. And so then, therefore, the Lord gives us a special ability then to be helpers of your faith, to be helpers of your faith. Huh? If you're lifting a heavy load, huh? You're lifting and you're straining. Somebody comes along and says, here, let me help you. Huh? You get it. It, it, it suddenly becomes much lighter. Much easier to deal with. We're helpers of your faith. Hallelujah. We help you step right over here in this thing. That God, that's why God's made us ministers of these. Hallelujah. Of these heavenly things. And we're here to do that at any time of the day. You can call me up. I got as much anointing at midnight as I have right now. If you woke me up at 3 o'clock in the morning, I got just as much anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Father wants the same thing for you. We don't want you to think that you have to wait to receive something only as we minister. For the Holy Ghost to minister to you and be, he's become the best help. Somebody's walking around saying, oh God, I just need you to help. He has helped you greatly. He's sent the helper. It's one of his, the names of the Holy Ghost. Helper. Hallelujah. Your helper is here. Amen. Well, you know, some of you are considering whether you want help in ministry. I want to give all the rest of you the opportunity to worship the Lord. Now listen, I want you to be, I want you to, I want you to be mindful of this. I, I want God to work special grace of provision for you. One of the most common words in the Bible is a word if. If you, if you put into your search engine on your computer, if. Your Bible search engine. You discover it's one of the most common words in the Bible. And the Lord makes every miracle a provision. Every miracle is a function, is an act, rather, of simply obeying. It's true. Of course, I said function because you could say, if you're willing and obedient. <laughs> So when it's more than one variable, right? It's not linear anymore, right? Are you with me? The Lord makes it much easier than that. Right? It has a linear regression to it. Hallelujah. 
The great, listen, say the simplest acts of obedience result in the greatest miracles of faith. And that's first witnessed by your salvation. A very simple act of obedience called upon the name of the Lord. The greatest miracle ever took place, took place in you. You've got a new heart, new spirit. Amen. Everything else works that way too. We want your finances to be blessed. And um, I, I want you to know that the kingdom of God doesn't work on money. The kingdom of God works on faith. So you see all of this, you see all this property here, right? All these buildings. This is faith. This is not money. It's faith. Now, faith does call in provision. Faith brings in provision. Okay? Faith brings in provision for healing. Faith brings in provision for miracles of different ty types. Like wind be still. Circumstances raging against you is too much for you. Stop in Jesus' name. The Lord promised us, he said, if we will honor him with our substance and the first fruits of our increase, everything that we have would be blessed from a, from an, uh, you know, from a rural point of view, view a agrarian society type of your point of view, your barns are full, your, <laughs> you, your wine vats overflow with, with the juice of the grapes that you just harvested. When you take, Haggai, the prophet Haggai said, when you put Father's house first, you build his house first, and you take care of his house first, then he is going to bless you before you even sow the seed. You've already got a bigger harvest than you've ever thought possible. See, so many people are always keep it like this. They take care of their own issues first. You know, it's, they, that's what they said to the prophet Haggai. Well, listen, how can we build the house of the Lord when we ourselves don't have a house to live in? Let us build our own houses first, and then when we get all squared away, we'll take care of the house of the Lord. The Lord said, it ain't going to work that way. Then you're going to have your money bags are going to have holes in it. Every bit of money you have put in it, it's not going to fall through the cracks. And you won't prosper. You never get ahead. So he says, he said, stop. Go up to the mountain, the place of my provision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring that provision that I give to you now and build my house and see what I'll do. Build my house. So we want you to begin, we want you to come and worship the Lord. I want you to worship him in, in a realm of worship, of adoration, of thanksgiving. The offering's been part of worship since the beginning. The offering doesn't represent anything but Jesus. Do you understand that? The offering that, that was offered by Abel represented Jesus. The offering that's offered by you right now represents Jesus. That's what the offering is. It's been a part of worship since the very beginning. The offering. Hallelujah. So just come and worship the Lord with your offering. If you want prayer, if you want prayer, come. We'll pray for you. If you want prayer, come. We'll pray for you. Otherwise, you know, you can just consider yourself dismissed. Find a bunch of people around you. Hug them. Tell them that you love them. Give them a holy hug. No unholy hugs here. If you're attracted to a person, do not hug them. Let me just break it down, okay? And <laughs> Hallelujah. I was, my wife's, I was my wife's pastor for four years before we got married. I hugged everybody but her in the meeting. She got a real complex about it all. Well, you know, I couldn't hug her. I was too attracted to her. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it's a good thing. It's been a good thing for 29 years. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Let's you standing up here. Father knows what your need is. He knows what you want. I come to Father every day. I say to the Lord, I say, Lord, I don't have the ability. I don't have the understanding. I don't have the strength to be able to do those things that I know you purposed for me to do. So, Holy Spirit, I look to you to give me the ability, to give me the strength, to give me the understanding. I yield myself completely over to you, for I recognize I can do nothing of myself. See, it was pretty easy for people like me. I mean, I'm, I've always worked hard. I can work hard. But the rest of it, I'm not really any good at it. Huh? I'm not. I need him. I need Jesus. And he gives me wisdom and counsel and understanding.
And when you know that you can't do it by yourself, it's easy for you to look to him. Oh, Rabbi, seek it in the name. What is it that you need right now, my dear brother? Prayer for my uh, niece and nephew. Uh, they just lost their grandfather on Friday. They did? Yeah, but uh, they're all Muslim and they're not saved. Well, just lift your hands towards heaven right now. Begin to worship Father because he's promised that you and your house would be saved. I take that as a promise. Somebody said, well, you know, uh, Paul just said that in Acts 16, verse 31. How can you be sure? One verse scripture. Oh, I can be sure. I watched what Abraham's walk with God did for Lot. I watched, I watched what Abraham's faith and walk with God did for the rest of his descendants. I've got other examples too. Father, I thank you for the anointing on Ulysses right now. I thank you, Father. We, I call in the family right now in the name of Jesus. I break off the yokes of the enemy now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for opening up their eyes to see you. Right now in Jesus' name. Whatever you want, George.